Yeah, we did. Uh, we worked uh, with Will. We worked with Nick Oss. We worked with Jaron Lewis. Um, we just – because Jaron and Nick hadn't had a ton of snaps uh, either. So we worked all three of those guys and, and uh, split a lot of those reps. And uh, Jaron needed them more than anybody because he hadn't had some reps because he'd missed some time. But, uh, you know, we we gave Will a lot of different pictures from our off- or from our defense. We didn't spend a ton of time truly on game planning on either side of the ball, mainly because we just wanted to get back to fundamentals and techniques and uh, all across the board, not just at the quarterback position because of all the things we talk about, missing so much time in camp. But uh, uh, I know that uh, Will and all the quarterbacks uh, uh, hopefully improved and, and got a number of pictures. How do you personally grade the performance of a true freshman quarterback? What do you look at each week to see improvement? Uh, how calm he is, um, that uh, he doesn't get ahead of himself, that uh, he's uh, relaxed but uh, under control, seeing things and not guessing what he's seeing, but truly seeing them. I've had the opportunity to sit with the quarterbacks during the morning uh, when Coach Klein is is in meetings with Coach Mess and the offensive staff just to pick their brain, and they pick my brain, and it's been good um, just to see how much knowledge that those uh, – those three guys have and, and uh, continue to, to gain it, to know that they haven't arrived, know that they have so much work to do. And this is a tough thing for uh, a young player or an inexperienced player to come in at quarterback. But uh, we have to do a great job as a coaching staff making it manageable for them too. And well, one more for me, thanks for these answers. Um, when you got a guy who's in a bit of a slump like Malik Knowles, what can, what can you guys do as a coaching staff to pump up his confidence and get him going? Well, got to get him some throws probably and uh, maybe get him an easy catch early on during the game. And you just don't know how it's ever going to how it's ever going to go on a week to week basis based on where the coverage is going and what kind of pressures they're showing. Or are we able to have success running the football or throwing it to the slot receiver or tight ends and backs to so just know that um, your, your number is going to be called at some time and you just have to continue to uh, practice hard every day. And, and when those opportunities come, make the most of them. David Smale. Hey, Coach. Uh, you talked about it being rivalry week. <clears throat> There's some who would say that it's not a rivalry. You've won 11 straight, 24 to 29. What are your thoughts about the rivalry with Kansas? I think it's a big rivalry. And uh, obviously, I've only been here for one year. But uh, uh, for the state of Kansas, it's a big deal. For those kids from Missouri, it's a big deal. And uh, so many of our guys know a lot of uh, of, of players and stuff on their team and uh, absolutely anytime that you have um, teams from the same state going against each other uh, at any level uh, and now you throw in the big 12 power five I think it's a big deal I know it is our, our kids and, and our alums and our fan base and the community in the state this is a big game and so uh, our guys are excited for the opportunity thank you you bet Fitz Hey, Coach, um, <clears throat> we, we spoke a little bit yesterday, but I, I didn't get a chance to ask you about the receivers, so kind of follow up on what Kellis said. Uh, the receivers haven't been productive. How concerning was that as you walked into or headed into this uh, off week, and have you seen any progress from that unit? Yeah, and, and every game's different, you know. Um, we didn't have very many plays against TCU. They j we just weren't able to get a rhythm and sustain some drives. And so um, that's – and they play such a tight defense and, and, and great coverage. But uh, uh, it's something that we talk about on a daily basis um, with our staff and uh, trying to find ways to – uh, get them more involved, whether it's maybe it's on some jet sweeps or reverses, uh, whatever it may be, trying to um, get as many guys involved as we can. We also have really good tight ends. You know, Nick hasn't caught many balls. Sammy hasn't caught many balls. But we have a, a bunch of those guys uh, running backs. we got to find the ways to get the ball a little bit to, to Harry and to Tyler. And so uh, it's a better problem to have in the fact that uh, uh, we know we're going to continue to improve and get better. You mentioned a couple of times that the off week was also a good chance to work some of these freshmen that haven't seen time along with the guys that have been out. But are there any true freshmen or maybe redshirt freshmen that haven't played a lot that are stepping up and might be nearing getting on the field? Well, I thought Jaron Lewis had a really good week. Uh, and uh, he's a guy that, you know, he was down for a while and missed a few weeks. Um, and that's probably where Will jumped ahead of him during during the fall camp. And 
uh, then we lose Skyler. And so we have to find another guy. Nick's done a really good job. So we gave Jaron a bunch of reps. And uh, Jaron's a young player that uh, uh, hasn't really had an opportunity for a variety of reasons. And, and so he, I think he got a lot better. It was good for us to get Cooper Beebe back this week. Um, so Cooper will be back in the fold playing. And so uh, getting Cooper kind of back up to speed, so to speak, uh, Keon Mosey continues to do some really good things. He gets overshadowed a little bit by Deuce, uh, but he's a really talented, uh, talented player that continues to improve. I feel like I've asked this before, but is he a guy that you might look at at taking some snaps at receiver to kind of get him in the slot and get him the ball? You're talking Keon? Yeah. Yeah, potentially. Uh, just trying to spoon feed him in small doses being a, a, a young player, but we have a lot of two and three back sets where he's been in the game and whether or not we move he or, or Deuce or any of our running backs around and put him in the slot or motion him back in. Uh, all those things are on the table, you bet. And finally, one last thing. Just when you can't think this year can't get any more weird, Puka Williams leaves KU leading up to this game. Uh, your thoughts on, on that in general, Puka departing uh, in the midseason like that? Yeah, chalk it up to 2020. You know, I just I, – it's it's so difficult right now. And, and uh, um, I, I hope his family's doing well. Uh, I know that was one of the one of the reasons. Uh, oftentimes it galvanizes a football team uh, when somebody leaves. Um, you know, we didn't have Skylar Thompson for, for TCU. Uh, and I think our team really came together. And so, um, you know, KU is going to show up and play no matter what. And they're going to give us their best effort for sure. Thank you, Coach. You bet. John? Yeah, Chris was going to follow Bleak. Is he totally healthy right now? Are you feeling good about where he's at as far as that's concerned? Yeah, he missed some time during the uh, open week um, with an injury, uh, but uh, practiced on uh, Saturday, full go, and then practiced yesterday. Although we had a short practice, he practiced yesterday. So um, I, I envision him being uh, healthy and available. No, but this game, I mean, Kansas obviously has had their struggles. Do you, do you feel like you have to fight any kind of worry about the team overlooking a team like this that has struggled like they have? No, we, we're not good enough to overlook anybody. Our kids know that. Our, our guys got to play their tails off to have an opportunity and to continue to prepare. And when we prepare really well, we put a good product out on the field. When we don't prepare as well, uh, we don't put as good a product out on the field. And, and our, our guys know that this game is – you know, it's so difficult and it's hard to win college football games and you don't win college football games on Saturday. I think you win them Monday through Friday. So our preparation has to be, has to have great focus, great energy, and the guy's got to be really locked in this week. You won this game last year. Did you feel like that's, that's had an impact on the recruiting trail for you? How important do you feel like this game is in that aspect? I think they all are, without question. You get uh, in-state kids or local guys or regional guys. I think uh, it's not just this game, but there's other games as well that impact uh, your regional recruiting. And so, you know, you, you can't think of that when you're putting together your game plan and, and playing. But, uh, you know, I think it's it's important for us to focus on the task at hand and not all the outside noise and outside auxiliary things that come with this game. Our focus has to be on executing uh, our game plans on offense, defense, and teams. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. You bet. Karen? Coach, um, a little more on Puka. When you prepare for KU, how different do you prepare for that offense without a player like him? Well, that'll be the interesting thing to see um, because they haven't been without him for very many games. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but uh, – um, I, I think they're going to do what they still do. Uh, dynamic players missing, just like when we didn't have Skyler, a dynamic player was missing. And so uh, I think you still have to have your identity of who you are. And they, they have plenty of players. Uh, you, you, they have really good skill kids. Uh, I've been impressed with uh, all their wide receivers. I think they're, the, the, the running backs are, are good. They run hard. They're physical. Um, quarterbacks are athletic. Um, so I, once again, so many people put so much emphasis on what one player can do for a football team. Holy cow. You better have all 11 executing at a high level to be successful on offense and defense. And coach, just one more thing um, on Skyler. You mentioned the last time we spoke with you that you were going to talk to him about how he could stay actively involved. Has 
he talk to you about that a little bit more now that you know he's a little further from this injury? Yeah, he came back on Monday. We had a really good conversation uh, and uh, excited about helping the quarterbacks. And he was at practice yesterday, uh, and uh, it was it was good. I just told him those those guys need his help. He sees the field really well. He sees uh, the game. It's slowed down for him as he's played, and uh, so he'll be a great great uh, help to those guys throughout the weekend on game day. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Max. Coach, when, when your, your staff, you think back when your, your staff asked you to, to make an evaluation on Deuce Vaughn, do you, do you remember watching the tape and, and I guess how quickly you formed an impression? About four snaps. And we said, okay, that kid can play in the Big 12 and, and be an impact guy. Uh, then you have one conversation with him and you say, okay, he has that it factor. He's mature um, beyond his years. He's it just – He's got his he got his priorities in, in in check, and he loved the game of football. You can just tell watching the kid play how much he loves to play, and so it did not take us long um, for us to uh, decide that he would be an exceptional football player here. When when you have a kid with that kind of work ethic combined with the personality, what what can that do for the culture of your football program? Well, he's a, a true freshman that's playing an awful lot, but he still goes to the developmental lift with all his other classmates. So does Will Howard. Uh, I think that tells you an awful lot right there that we need to have him make an impact as well as Will uh, on that freshman class. And um, for him to be able to go and lift with those guys and, and see that you know, there's work ethic as well as uh, a really good ability to play, I think that helps. Uh, and, and without question, he's going to be, uh, somebody that uh, we lean on heavily from a from a leadership standpoint uh, throughout his career. Thanks. You bet. Mitchell. Hey, Coach. Uh, so far this year, there have been three different starting quarterbacks for KU. Um, still kind of muddled going into this week, but it might be the freshman, Jalen Daniels. What do you make out of that, whoever is going to be starting under center? Well, um, I'm not sure who they're going to play. That's not my not my worry. We just have to prepare uh, and and try to watch whatever film we have on on all three players, and uh, know that um, their coaching staff is a good coaching staff. They're going to put them in position to be successful, and uh, we may have to adapt and adjust uh, as the game goes to to what they're trying to hang their hat on. Uh, but uh, I know they have a really good offensive staff that. Uh, is going to put them in positions to be successful. Of course, um, a lot of attention has gone to Puka Williams, justifiably, but um, their backup, Velton Gardner, is actually leading the team in rushing yardage right now. What what kind of uh, per, what, what kind of things are you expecting to see out of him on the game day? I see him carrying the ball an awful lot. You know, he's you're right. He's a leading rusher, and I think he's an exceptional football player. Uh, great downhill runner. Has the ability to make you miss. Um, doesn't get brought down with with, hope, with arm tackles. Been impressed with him, and that's where you know I know that you take a good player out of the out of the mix, but uh, um, it's going to give him more opportunities, and um, uh, he'll be a focal point of their offense. And we have to do a great job of trying to slow him down because he's a really talented player. Uh, and one final question: um, Last week, um, did you notice some some defensive improvements from KU? Because that that game against West Virginia was a one score game up until like uh, uh, the majority of the way through the third quarter? Well, I have not watched the game as it goes. We were practicing during the time of their game because we needed to focus on us. And then I've seen them through cut-ups. Um, and so we don't see it as the game as the game goes, or I haven't seen it as the game has gone yet. Uh, but uh, obviously they were off to a 10 to nothing lead, 10-0 lead, and, and we're doing some really good things on defense. And um, no, they've, they've got talent on that side of the ball. And, and so we're going to have our hands full um, with their game plans offensively and defensively. And, and we have to have great execution, um, cannot turn the football over and can't give up explosive plays. That's, that's the formula, no matter who you're playing uh, to have success is you, you hang on to the football and you keep them from explosive plays. Thanks coach. You bet. Here we got time for these last three raised hands, starting with Sully. Hey, Coach, not sure if you saw the uh, Chiefs game yesterday, but obviously uh, near the end of the game kind of put it away. Byron Pringle had a really big catch, and after the game, Andy Reid said, you know, it's great for us and also great for K-State recruiting. Just want to get your thoughts on that and if you agree with that statement. 
Hey, thanks, Coach Reed. Uh, I didn't see the game. We were out of practice, but obviously Taylor Bratt was all over it, and, and uh, I saw it after uh, early in the evening. I saw that. Thanks, Coach Reed, and great job by Byron Pringle. And, and uh, absolutely, that it's uh, a great help for us. We'll take that help anytime we can get it. Cool. Thanks, Coach. Kellis? Chris, it, it, uh, it seems to me a lot of the guys that you are starting and playing a bunch in the secondary right now were kind of thrust into action um, initially against Oklahoma, just kind of out of necessity when all the COVID stuff happened. Is it kind of funny thinking back that um, that's been kind of a weird side effect that you've had to piece together some lineups and actually found some good things because of all this? Without question. It's really helped. Uh, Echo Boydo has played really good football for us, except for him because he's waited his time. He's, he has not had an opportunity, uh, just continued to work hard uh, through a lot of different scenarios. He was able to get an opportunity and make the most of it. Um, Justin Gardner's done some really good things. We were counting on Justin because we brought him in um, as a junior college transfer, but he missed all the spring ball. So you just don't pick up our system that quickly. Uh, and then he was thrust into a role and has, and has played well. And then uh, T. Denson's done some good things as a true freshman. And Keandre Thomas, as a, as a transfer from Minnesota, has missed significant time, and he's back. So it, it has helped us um, getting those guys the experience and, and uh, excited of, of how those guys are playing. I think Coach Malone and Coach Kleinman do a great job uh, of emphasizing those guys' strengths, and they're playing hard. Last one here, Ryan Black. Hey, uh, Chris, I, I asked Colin last week just, you know, after the injury to, to Skyler, you know, maybe whether that would mean, you know, that you guys somewhat uh, shake up the depth chart just in terms of maybe giving Jaron more backup reps. And he was like, well, Ryan, you know, the, the one and two spots are pretty established. But but you mentioning that Jaron standing out so much last week, I guess how, how resilient can you say that he is? Because I know that can't be easy for a guy like him who's a redshirt freshman and, and then to see Will Howard come as a true freshman and – and leave them on the depth chart, especially because quarterback's not a not a position where you get the kind of you know rotations that you would at receiver or defensive line or, or things like that. Yeah, I've been very impressed with with Jaron, and once again, this goes back to the to the fall camp phase, and we can't talk about all the things, but he missed significant time, and that's just hard when you're a new player that missed all of spring ball. And I know he was here as a true freshman, but you're just trying to survive your true freshman year. And uh, he saw Will doing some really good things. And, and he said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to learn this because I'm not far away from taking a snap. And it, whether it's injury, whether it's COVID, you better continue at all positions, in particular quarterback, continue to rep guys and give guys opportunities because you never know when your number is going to be called. Take Echo Boydo. He, his, he didn't think his number was going to be called. Now he's a starting corner for us and playing at a high level. So um, we, we will continue even as we get into game prep of taking time every day at practice for young players or guys that haven't played yet and setting that time aside and saying, hey, it's just K-State offense versus K-State defense and you guys go play because your number is going to be called sometime this year.